So today's lesson is on equivalent trig functions. And just as a warm up, I want you to graph um, f of x, g of x, h of x, and p of x on your graphing calculator and see what happens. So pause the video and graph these functions. You're probably all completely blown away now that these functions are all the same. It probably has something to do with syncing the periods to the horizontal phase shifts. The horizontal shifts are returning us to the original function, and since sinusoidal functions repeat themselves, this will work. It's a really cool property of trigonometric functions. Now let's verify this equivalence using the unit circle. Let's pick an arbitrary value for theta. So I'm just going to pick pi over 4. That's my favorite. So let's say that's theta. Now we're going to try plugging in theta into all these functions and seeing um, if we get the same value. So first value is negative sine theta. And sine pi over 4 is your y value, so root 2 over 2. And because it's negative, we know that f of x, this first value here, is going to be negative root 2 over 2. Now let's try g of x. So sine pi over 4 plus pi is going to give us, so pi over 4 is here, plus a full pi will bring us to um, sine, so 5 pi over 4, and the sine value is your y value, so that's going to be negative 2 root 2, which matches our f of x. Okay, so now let's do h of x, which is sine um, theta minus pi, so theta is pi over 4, so it's sine pi over 4 minus pi. So we're starting from pi over 4 and going backwards now because it's a negative value, a full pi, and that's going to bring us back to this point. We're just looking at it from this perspective. And if you calculate it, it's going to be sine of negative 3 pi over 4, which is equivalent to sine of 5 pi over 4. And again, our value is going to be the same value, so negative root 2 over 2. Okay, now let's try p of x, which is cos pi over 4 plus pi over 2. When we add those up, find a common denominator. It's going to be cos of 3 pi over 4. Or we could just do it graphically. So you're starting with pi over 4. Add pi over 2. So that's just 90 degrees. Or pi over 2 radians. Um, and then here, that's our cos value. So that's your x value. So again, we get negative root 2 over 2. And you can do this with any value on the unit circle. I didn't just pick one that works. This works with all values. Other symmetries are um, sine of pi over 3, for example. So sine of pi over 3, root 3 over 2, is equal to sine 2 pi over 3, which is three, root 3 pi over 2, or cos of pi over 6. So right there, that's also equivalent and cos 11 pi over 6, so the x value of that, um, or sine pi over 6, so root 2 over 2 is equal to cos of pi over 3, right there, um, and that's equal to sine of pi over 6, for, sorry, 5 pi over 6, which is half, and then cos 5 pi over 3 are all equivalent functions. We can create equivalent expressions by looking for patterns within the unit circle. So if we remember from the beginning of the year, we talked about odd and even functions. So just to recap, an even function occurs when you plug in a negative value for x and you get your original function. So an example of an even function in trigonometric functions would be the cosine functions. Um, graphically, if you think about it, it has symmetry about the y-axis, which is a graphic property of an even function. So if you imagine that this is drawn well, you can see that every negative x value has a corresponding y value on the other side. That's exactly the same. So all values will match. Now, if we remember, an odd function occurs when you plug in a negative value for x 
and you get the negative um, y value, so negative f of x. An example of that is your sine function. So if you plug in a negative value for sine of x, you get negative sine x. And graphically, that looks like this, where all your negative x values will have a corresponding negative y value. So this with that, this with that, this with that. Now let's look at tan. Um, so tan of negative x, if we plug in a negative value, we know that um, that's sine over cos. So sine x over cos of x. And since we've looked at both of these, we know that when we plug in sine, it's going to be negative sine x over, and cos is an even function, so it's just going to be itself. And so that's going to give you negative tan x, which makes tan an odd function as well. So we know that tan of negative x is equal to negative tan x, which makes it odd. And if we think about the graph of that, it makes sense that it is odd. Since there is symmetry about the y equals x axis. Now let's look at it from a different perspective. So if we consider this triangle, this is going to be theta. Um, that means that this must equal, how would we find this out? So if you just want to work in degrees, if this is 30, you know this is 60, so it's going to be 90 minus 30. So this would be pi over 2 minus theta, right? So let's actually use that example that I just said. This is going to be 60, so pi over 3. And this is going to be 30, so pi over 6. Now, because of the pi over 2 shift between the cosine graph and the sine graph, we know that sine of pi over 3 is equal to the cosine of pi over 6. So we saw this when we were talking about the equivalencies in the unit circle before, and you probably noticed this from the last unit when we were working with um, our special triangles. Now this relationship works for um, every single angle, um, not just pi over 3 and pi over 6, they just happen to be complementary angles, but if we follow this general form, we can say that sine of theta is equal to cosine of pi over 2 minus theta. So again, this works for 45 degrees, so pi over 4. Um, pi over 2 minus pi over 4 is going to be pi over 4. And you know that the sine of pi over 4 is equal to the cosine of pi over 4. And those that's the 1, 1, root 2 triangle. So makes sense. Um, another one is cosine of theta is equal to sine pi over 2 minus theta. So again, because that works because of that pi over 2 shift from the sine graph and the cosine graph. And tan graph, since these have that relationship, you could also expect the tan graph to have the same relationship. It's going to have it with the cotan graph. And we know that the asymptotes and the entire function is shifted over pi over 2 for that as well, minus theta. So all these are called cofunctions. Now let's prove this using principal and related acute angles. So if we recall, a principal angle is the angle measured from the positive x-axis, and your related acute angle is the angle as measured from the terminal arm of the principal angle to the nearest x-axis. Now determining your related acute angle depends on the quadrant your terminal arm lies in. Now the complementary angle equivalence that we just did in the last slide, um, we're related really to the first quadrant because we looked at 30, 60, 90, um, the example, or 45, 45, 90. Um, now let's take it to the second, third, and fourth quadrant. So let's look at the second quadrant first. So our terminal line lies in the second quadrant. And um, here are your related acute angles. Now this is your principal angle. 
And you know our values are going to be, so cos theta, sine theta. Right, that's standard, that's in the first quadrant, it's always gonna be that. In the second quadrant, because our x value is negative, you know that affects the cosine, so you're gonna have negative cos theta, sine theta, because your y is positive. So your sine value is gonna be the exact same. Also, just to label our graph, this is zero, this is gonna be pi radians. So sine, pi minus theta, that is right here, is going to be equal to sine of theta. And if we recall, that is equal to y over r. Now cosine pi minus theta, so again the one in the second quadrant, is going to be the negative cos of theta. And again, just to remember from last unit, that's x over r. And now tan of pi minus theta is going to be negative tan because your cos is negative and your sine is positive, so when you divide those, they're gonna get a negative value. And that is equal to y over negative x. Okay, now looking at the third quadrant, you have our principal angle is this, um, and your related acute angles are right there. This is pi, so this angle, is going to be um, pi plus theta. Okay, um, let's look at our sine or cosine sine, and this is going to be negative cosine and negative sine. Okay, so sine of pi plus theta is going to be the same as negative sine theta since it's negative. Um, cosine of pi plus theta is going to be negative cos theta, right? Because we're looking at the third quadrant, so everything's negative there. Um, now tan pi plus theta is sine over cos, so negative divided by a negative, which is going to give us a positive, so that one is positive. Now looking at the fourth quadrant, we have our principal related angle, which is going to be two pi minus theta. And let's label our, our cosines and sines. So, of course, this is cos theta, sine theta. And because your x is positive, it's just going to be cos theta. Now, sine is negative because y is negative, so minus sine theta. Okay, so let's list our trig ratios here. So, sine 2 pi minus theta is equal to negative sine theta, um, cosine 2 pi minus theta is going to be, so cos is positive, x is positive here, so cos theta, and then tan of 2 pi minus theta, we're dividing a negative by a positive, so you're going to get a negative tan theta. And those are all your co-functions.